special mantra. When we had a, Tara Tukul used to stay with us, a Lama in Amherst. Years ago, he was a professor for a while at Amherst. He didn't speak English, so I had to translate for him. And um, he, uh, he would recite that mantra all the time. And, and I asked him once, why are you always reciting Manjushri's mantras? He said, he would be saying, Omar Abbas Nadi, Omar Nadi, like that. He said, well, because Americans need to be more intelligent. <laughs> So I'm reciting this mantra of intelligence to try to like stimulate people's in, in, innate genius, he used to say. And um, he was discouraged sometimes, but I won't tell that story right now. So, so, so His Holiness, uh, now maybe a personal story might be good to start. So how many of you are coming to all of this whole event? There's like four or five sessions, we have a weekend retreat, oh good, great. So I might as well start with a little, so we have time, because it takes time. And since His Holiness only has two days, which he very, very graciously and kindly gave to us to do this, which he had promised to do for me for a long time, really since I translated this book like 30 years ago. And in a way he's going to just open a certain gate to it, like you know, you can't cover all of the details of this, of course, in that time. So. So people would really appreciate it. We thought we would do this thing ahead of time. And uh, some people at least would be able to be sort of ready for him touching the sort of quintessential points. And um, my story with this book is that when I was, um, when I went back to university, to graduate school, and you know, I got through my coursework and this kind of thing and, lear and learned Sanskrit and Chinese, and then, um, and then uh, came to the thesis time. And in the thesis time, uh, my Japanese professor wanted me to do a translation of Tsongkhapa's uh, Vipassana teaching in the Lamrim Chemo, in the great stages of the path to enlightenment, which is treating the Madhyamaka or the central, central way. I call them central way, by the way. I, call, I don't call it middle way. The middle way was the Buddha's middle way between asceticism and self-indulgence you know, severe asceticism and self-indulgence. So then people transferred that to the word Madhyamaka and they call it middle way. But then a middle way philosopher, they're kind of stuck because nobody wants to say the middleists. <laughs> it just doesn't sound right. But Madhyama also means center. Like the Madhyama, Madhyama Nadi is the central channel, for example. Madhya Pradesh in India is the central state, you know. Madhya Desha, you know, means the central country, you know. So Madhya can be center or middle, and it's, it's easy to say centrist, the centrist philosophers. You know, they don't have to be, they can be in the center of the road, they don't have to be in the middle of the road, you know, all the time. But, you know, nobody else calls it centrist. They just say either the Sanskrit Madhyamaka or middle way thinkers or something like that, because no one wants to say middleist, and I don't blame them. <laughs> I never wanted to say it either. So, uh, but that was anyway in the same topic of the centrist philosophy because the, the critical, you know, there are three levels of developing wisdom to realize the nature of reality. Of learning, the level of learning, the level of critical reflection, like philosophical meditation, in that sense like Descartes' meditations. And then there's one-pointed meditation. And without the previous two stages, the one point of meditation will not necessarily lead someone to understanding. It will just go off somewhere and land on some point and then it will not, it, it has to be, it's like in Zen, even in Zen where they, some way, the way some people teach Zen, they try to discourage critical thinking. But actually you have to develop a great doubt in Zen. And, and uh, the koan, for example, the public case or the, the riddle type case, is a way of developing tremendous doubt by critically thinking this way and that way and the other. And it isn't that the thinking will get you completely to the understanding, but it brings you to the brink. It's necessary to bring you to the brink, even in Zen. And it's totally part of the Buddhist educational model, in fact. And um, so the Madhyamaka, or the centrist thought, is considered to be the indispensable prerequisite of the one-pointed meditation on reality itself, the discovery of self, which is the discovery of selflessness or emptiness, which is not a meditation really in a way on emptiness or selflessness, 
that would just lead one to a nihilistic misunderstanding. It's a meditation on non-emptiness and a meditation on the self. It's an attempt to discover the self, to discover what is not empty, to discover what seems to resist analysis. It's actually what the one point of meditation is in. And then, and then emptiness is discovered by failing to find that thing that one thinks is there, by seeing through it, by penetrating it type of idea. So, so, um, so that's, all, that's what I was going to do. I was going to translate it in the context of the meditation of vipassana, or critical insight, or what I call transcendent insight. Uh, which is what the the Lagtong, uh, the the vipassana that's looking for selflessness by looking for the self and sustaining the inability to find that analysis resistant self. <laughs>